Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is Logic 301, month number three on piano arithmetic. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at proof that the successor of a natural number is also a natural number. So, the second of Piano's postulates states simply that the successor of any natural number is also a natural number. While this is slightly more involved than the proof of postulate one, it is still fairly intuitive based on the definitions of successorship and natural numbers. Here's what we're going to be proving. For all classes A, if A is a member of the set of all natural numbers, then the successor of A is a member of the set of all natural numbers. If you want to try proving it on your own, you should pause the video here and give it a try. A quick reminder for everyone, in a lot of situations, Piano's postulates are just assumed. But in the formulation we're using right now, we're actually taking our assumptions to be the basic axioms of set theory, and so we are able to prove Piano's postulates. And so we don't need to assume them because our axioms of set theory let us build up to them. Anyway, hopefully that's given you a chance to pause the video if you wanted to try it on your own. If not, let's get started. So this is our conclusion. This is what we're trying to prove. In order to prove it, we're going to assume indirect proof, which means we are going to assume that negation of that statement and try to get to a contradiction. We'll draw a line going down. We'll do a change of quantifier to pull that negation inside of our universal quantifier and change it to an existential quantifier so there exists an A instead of for all A. Then we will existentially instantiate A to X. So it's not the case that x is a member of n implies the successor of x is a member of n. Then we're going to do a very common process where we're going to, whenever you have a negated implication, you can turn it into a disjunction and then turn it into a conjunction and pull out each part individually. Remembering that the only time an implication is false is when the first half is true and the second half is false. So if you have a negated implication, you can get down to each of those pieces. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We will first turn our implication into a disjunction, and they will go ahead and distribute our negation across the two terms using De Morgan's law. Then we will go ahead and simplify each of the pieces out and finally use double negation so that we have these two individual pieces of x is a member of n, and it's not the case that the successor of x is a member of n. All of that was a lot of complicated steps to get to the basic fact that the negation of imp an implication means that the antecedent, x is a member of n, must be true, and the consequent, the successor of x is a member of n, must be true false, which is exactly what we have in premises 7 and 8. So next up, we're going to do the definition of a natural number. This is just by definition what we have, what we assumed in a previous video. Check that out uh, if you're curious on how we're defining or why we're defining n this way. What it is is for all classes A, A is a member of n is identical to for all B, if B is inductive, then A is a member of B. We're going to go ahead and universally instantiate A to X again here. In this, that gets us X is a member of N equals for all B. If B is inductive, then X is a member of B. We are also going to universally instantiate premise 9 using the successor of X as A. You'll see why in a second. We're going to go ahead and use premise 8, premise 10, identity. We have x is a member of n, so we can show that for all b, if b is inductive, then x is a member of b. And we're also going to use identity on premise 7, 11, but it gets us the negation of the second half of that statement now. So it's not the case that for all b, if b is inductive, then the successor of x is a member of b. Then we're going to go ahead and do a change of quantifier here on premise 13 and existentially instantiate uh, b to a new variable, y. Then we are going to go through the same process we went through before. We'll go ahead and change our implication to a disjunction, and we will split out, distribute our negation across and split it out into a conjunction, which means we could pull either of these sides of the uh, conjunction anytime we want. We're not going to do it right away, but we will do it in just a second. So... Next, we're going to do premise 12, universal instantiation. So we instantiated our premise 13 already, which was when we plugged in the successor of x in for a. Now we are going to be taking premise 12, where we plugged in x for a, 
in our uh, definition of the set of all natural numbers. And we're going to plug in y for b. We're able to do this because we are now universally instantiating uh, y, and so we're able to use a previously used variable. If we had have done this in the opposite order, where we universally instantiated first and then tried to existentially instantiate, we would have to have used a new variable. Now, we'll go ahead and simplify premise 17. We'll pull, it's not the case, it's not the case that y is inductive out. Double negation gets us y is inductive. And then we'll use modus ponens on 18 and 20 to get x is a member of y. Next up, we're going to simplify premise 17 again and get the other half of that conjunction. It's not the case that successor of x is a member of y. We draw our line going down to continue. Then we're going to go ahead and pull out the induct the definition of an inductive set as well as premise 20. So premise 20 tells us that y is inductive. And the definition of the inductive set tells us that if y is inductive, that means that the null set is a member of y, and for all c, c is a member of y implies that the successor of c is a member of y. We'll go ahead and simplify out, get rid of that question mark on the null set, and just focus on the successorship part. We will then universally instantiate c to be x. And then we can show that 21, 25 modus ponens the successor of x is a member of y, because we had x is a member of y, and we know y is inductive, so. Then we have the successor of x is a member of y, and it's not the case the successor of x is a member of y. Premise 22, premise 26, conjunction. We now have a contradiction, so we can pull out of our inductive proof to get premise 28 for all a, a is a member of n, implies the successor of a is a member of n, premise 1 through 26, indirect proof. And that is the second piano postulate. Next up, we are going to be working on a proof that 0 is the first natural number. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.